Check him out. He's looking at me. Well, it's like almost a little, not quite a baby deer. He's just sitting there. There he goes. I see him moving. Well, good to see that at least he's checking around him. You never know when a predator might get him. All right. So couldn't think of anything better to do on election day. Take the boss dog out, enjoy the day. It's nice and cloudy, I like that. Slight breeze, beautiful day. Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. November 5th, video number two. Let's get into it. Well, let's see. You got a gas leak in Northville, uh, Michigan. Uh, let's see, Cambridge County went down in Pennsylvania. Now, the good news is, is that the Republicans were right on it. They knew the Democrats were going to cheat in Pennsylvania. So the lawyers went in and they said, uh, well, you know, the machines have been down for X number of hours. We want those polling locations to stay open longer as a result. And uh, they got the, the, the ruling. From my understanding is those polling locations will now be open till 10 at night. So that people that uh, when they went there to vote, the problem is, you know, a lot of times in these Republican areas, when people show up, oh, sorry, the dog went crazy. Got to move him over. The, uh, the problem is when people show up and they don't get to vote, then uh, a lot of times they just go home. You know, they won't go back, uh, even though the polling stations are going to be open till, till 10 at night. So I guess we'll find out on that what happens. So the, uh, what was the other one? No, Arizona, they had a, a whole county go down with their voting machines. I can't remember. Apache. Apache County? I never heard of it. And make sure to bring your government-issued ID. We're also following a developing story on the Navajo Nation. Navajo President Boo Nigren says voting machines are down in Apache County. That borders northwestern New Mexico and includes Window Rock. Nigren also says some voters are being turned away without casting a ballot. He says you should ask for a provisional ballot and make sure to bring your government-issued ID. My name is Zach Shira, and I'm the Assistant County Manager for Elections and External Affairs here at Maricopa County. As we do every election, our first results drop will be 8 p.m., an hour after the polls close. We expect this will be, to be between 70 and 75 percent of the early ballots that we have received to date. Additional results will be reported throughout the night, and those will be the in-person uh, votes that we tabulate at our vote centers. The majority of ballots will be counted within the first 24 hours after the polls close. But it's important to remember that here in Arizona, our races are extremely close and it still might take a few days for you, the media, to call those races. It is possible that some of the candidates who are ahead on election night and some of those questions as well might not have, might not be ahead and might not maintain those leads after election day as additional ballots are counted and reported. This is normal. Um, so that went down. But, you know, I wanted to point something out to you that I think is pretty amazing. You know, here in Florida, we never have any problems. I heard there might have been a couple of glitches, but uh, you notice how nothing happens in Florida? Because we have a voting system when we're a Republican state. But yet, uh, oh, yeah, and then, of course, there was Georgia. Yeah, we got that rat burger idiot there. Uh, you know, that's what I call him, rat burger. I, why, and by the way, that's why how you know Kent is a Democrat. Any any uh, Republican governor, you know, with with a grain of salt, would have fired Ratberger a long time ago. You know that Ratberger is a Democrat, so you know I don't think DeSantis would put up with some so much incompetence here. But anyway, there was uh, two bomb threats that were called in. As we stand by waiting for the vote to close in Georgia, what's the latest you're hearing from the campaign? Well, Jake, they are watching very closely what has been happening throughout the day and it's seemingly increasingly as we get toward that poll closing deadline at the top of the hour, which is that there have been bomb threats being called in to
to uh, polling places throughout the state of Georgia, Fulton County, DeKalb, DeKalb County, Cobb County, and others. Uh, these threats uh, are non-credible. They are not believed to be credible, but they are being investigated. And as a result, some of these polling places maybe temporarily uh, were closed, uh, voters turned away. I was speaking to a senior Democrat down there in Georgia, watching this very carefully, saying they are hoping that voters will come back Anyone who might have been scared away in uh, those periods of time will come back and will cast their ballots. Uh, some of those uh, polling places also, Jake, are being kept open a little bit after the top of the hour. So this is uh, an ongoing situation that they are watching very closely because of where this is happening. This is happening in the parts of the state where the Harris campaign and Democrats need to drive up turnout uh, among uh, Democratic-leaning voters. So uh, when you have polling places that are closed, temporarily. That's a problem for them. Uh, and they want to make sure that those voters end up coming back, Jake. And then Ratberger, <laughs> he blamed it on the Russians. <laughs> the Russians. Yeah, the Russians are going to call in bomb threats in, in Georgia. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of in my lifetime. But you know what? People evidently are falling for it. I don't know. I, it doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, I also wanted to talk about election uh, interference. Uh, you know that the, the Google searches, uh, they're, they're coming up. Uh, that's why I say don't Google anything. Duck, duck, go, or start page. Don't ever use Google, man. It's, it, the search engine is biased. You know that they're, they're biased towards it. And, and look at what they did on YouTube. You know, I put up, I, I guess you saw my emergency video, or maybe you didn't. I put up this beautiful video. It took me 16 hours to make the video and get it uploaded and... Uh, I took clips, and just so you know, I take my clips from uh, from people's uh, X accounts. I don't go and, you know, just cut them out of a video or something like that. I make sure I get them from the X accounts. And so I went to um, RFK Jr.'s, uh, you know, his... Um... <laughs> Boy, the dog's getting fired up today, isn't he? I went to his, uh, his you know, X account and, and cut the clips because obviously he wants people to hear his message. So I tried to make sure... Okay, whoa, whoa, hold on. <laughs> well, that's a problem when you're out walking the dog. <laughs> anyway, uh, getting back to it. I don't even know where I cut off, but uh, I was going to talk about YouTube for just a minute. And, uh, you know, the thing that bothers me is a lot of people, and I, I can understand where Tucker Carlson's coming from, because you can watch a whole Tucker Carlson uh, episode on somebody's channel and they've captured the whole thing and YouTube I don't know how why they don't give give them a copyright strike and they're obviously monetized because commercials will come on because I do watch those because I'm like okay I can't get it you know I I want to watch them on X but I would rather watch it on the big screen on the TV and I hate giving these people so I imagine Tucker is out there trying to stop people you know with copyright violations but you see how selective it is. Somebody who captures an entire Tucker Carlson, you know, hour, two hour long, you know, uh, speech and puts it up on their channel and they don't even get, get, you know, copyright. And I put up a two minute clip and they take down my video. Now don't tell me that's not being selective. That's censorship. So anyway, that's why I keep telling you to go to the burn or whatever. The, uh, the other thing I, wanted to hit on was California. You know, if we ever, if any next states become like California, we're done for as a nation. There was a woman on X and she went in and she, she just, you know, she just wanted to be belligerent. And uh, she said, I'm, I'm gonna show you my ID. And they said, no, nope, no, nope, we can't look at it. And she said, what do you mean? She said, you don't wanna see an ID? And they said, no, no, nope, that's, the, that's the law here in California. So, you know, don't, don't bother showing us your ID, we don't want to see it. Can you imagine? So that means that all those illegal immigrants in California are voting in the election. Because if, if you don't have to show, I mean, you could drive in from other states and vote in California. You could be over here from Great Britain, walk in, maybe don't say anything because of the accent, <laughs> and go ahead and vote. Although I bet even with the accent, they would let them vote. You could walk in and not even speak English and vote in California. So you can see that election it's so rigged that no Republican is ever going to win California. So, I mean, and, you know, what, what's shocking to me, 
I wanted to talk about Democrats for just a minute. You know, that's my favorite subject. And somebody was pointing out on the radio, and that's why I listened to it. They said, you know, Kamala Harris never, ever, well, number one, she was appointed queen. She was, you know, of the, of the Democrat Party. If the Republicans did that, I, they, they wouldn't get my vote. You know, if we don't have a primary, I guarantee you I wouldn't be voting for them. I'd, I'd probably vote for Jill Stein, for example. Obviously, I'm not going to vote Democrat. So they appointed her queen. Democrats went along with it. They're okay with it. And then she never, ever said where she stands on anything. And that was by design. The guy was pointing it out. He says, this is the first campaign where they, they ran a candidate and they never, ever said, you know, what, what she stands for on anything. So really, you don't know. Well, we know what she's going to do. I mean, just based on her past record. But she never said, and so that what he was saying, he says in the future, if she does win, I got somebody coming. I'm gonna grab the dog. If she does win, uh, then no campaign in the United States will ever tell the American people where they stand on anything because you don't need to tell people where you stand to win. And you know, and then the other thing is, I don't think the Republicans, somehow they don't get the message out to the independents and the, uh, uh, you know, the, the Republic or de Democrats uh, that, you know, where Trump stood on uh, women's rights. Number one, he didn't want men in women's sports. I think most every woman would go along with that. I, I guess, I mean, maybe some of the liberal lunatics wouldn't. And Trump never said he was gonna take away social security. Kamala Harris is out there saying, Trump's gonna take away your social security. So I just think a lot of people believe that. They, they said that he's going to pass a nationwide abortion ban. Trump said, no, I'm not going to do anything like that. He, he's perfectly happy with just having the states decide what they're going to do. They said he was going to get rid of, I, what is it called, IVF treatments, I guess, fertilization. Trump said, no, I'm not going to get rid of that. Not ever. You know, and so they, they get out and they actually run advertisements and the Democrats lie about all this stuff. And people believe it. And, but I don't know, I, this is where I fought the Republicans. I mean, although he says it at his rallies, no Democrat ever watched a Trump rally. So the only thing I can think of to do is to run, you know, advertisements on Democrat channels. Yeah, you know, I hate paying the mainstream media, but I think that'd be the only way you get your message across and say, here's where I stand. Oh, in contraception. They said that Trump was gonna take away all contraception. Trump said, no, I'm not. He's totally against that. So I just wanted to make a, for future elections, this is what we have to have. We have to have, get the message out that all these th lies that the Democrats tell, we got to get the message to the, to the Democrats and to the independents that they're lies and that that's not where you stand uh, ever. Okay. I just wanted to see what this clip would look like. <laughs> it's getting really dark. You know, once again, you know, you take stupid study mode off and I'm at UHD 30. I uh, just wanted to give you a piece of advice, uh, something that I'm doing right now, was I had all this uh, distilled water because that's what you put in the batteries on the golf cart. Well, I had to get rid of the golf cart because I shorted it out. Uh, it, was a, it was 24 years old anyway, so it was a good idea. But anyway, what I'm doing is I'm taking the, uh, the old water and... Uh, and I'm bringing it in because I have gallon jugs of water and I'm using those up and throwing those out and then I'll be replacing all of that water uh, with new water. So, and, but it's, uh, I mean, this was my emergency water supply. So you might want to think of doing something like that. Same with emergency food. You know, you always check the dates. I write the dates on everything. So you know, just make sure you're working through everything and getting stuff off your shelf before, you know, as it expires even the water, go through the water. And then another thing that I do is when I'm, I go through vinegar, I take that vinegar bottle and I put filtered water in there because those vinegar jugs, they're nice and thick and they hold that water for a long time. Plus the vinegar, you know, it's a nice sterile environment for the water. You could do the same thing with a Clorox jug also, but I just prefer using the vinegar. I mean, of course you get as much of the vinegar out, but it doesn't matter if a little bit's you know, in the plastic, you know, it's actually will keep the water uh, uh, more pure. All right. You've got a four hour long line in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. We got a lot of 
complaints about the lines here. Um, how long have you guys been waiting in line? Half an hour. Half an hour. Just to go about yeah, just 30 Yes, a half an hour, that's all. <laughs> and then you've got another two hours to go. Are you going to wait that long? <laughs> Waiting a long time. How you doing? Nice to see you. You brought the co the, the chairs here? Yes. We, we didn't know. We came and saw the mall. Went back to Walmart and bought the chair. You came first and came back. Now, a number right. of people have come back multiple times. How long have you waited here? Not too long. About a half hour. Half an hour. Half an hour. How, how do you feel about the process? Well, we wish it was moving faster. <laughs> you got to do it. You gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. And it's nice to see all these patriotic people. Yes, it's very nice. Coming out to vote. How long do you anticipate yeah. waiting to vote? Well, we're gonna wait as long as we. As have long as it to. takes. What when does it close here? Uh, eight o'clock. Eight, 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 eight o'clock. So that you could be waiting two to three hours to vote. You're okay with that? Well, we have no choice. Did you bring water, food, anything like that? No. 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 We get the forest in case we need to go to the bathroom. That's what I did. <laughs> See, you, it was we've been running around. Oh, thank you. See you. Yeah, I live in Bergen County, but we've been going around. So how do you feel about this process? Could have a log jam. It's a log jam. How long do you expect to wait? So we're being told four hours. Four hours. From back there. So, so just get a, that shot again. That's four hour long lines here in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Yep. And uh, did you come earlier, or is this your show? It's my third time here. Third time here She's today. Been here. I've been here three times. Three times. Third time's a charm. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> Hoping it was going to move a little quicker, but back to square one and waiting longer than uh, we were waiting earlier. So. And and um, and her hear anything in, happening inside? Have you heard any stories or reports of it? Uh, so they just, I guess they had ordered up a fourth uh, voting machine mm -hmm. that came and was programmed for the long district. It's dangerous. So that kind of shut down that idea. Voting machines. Yeah, we heard something about Dominion people being here. So that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah, let us know if you hear any more about that. We'll What's your name? John. John, nice to see you. Yes, John. Nice to you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right. We're, we're standing here in, uh, hi, James O'Keefe. We're standing here in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. If you're just tuning in, we've got long lines. How long have you been waiting here? Uh, we're in an hour here. They said about five hours. Five this hours. morning, the machines were down from six to nine this morning. Six until nine, the machines were down. Six until nine. Three hours back up. Three hours. And, Disgusting, and right? How long have you been waiting here? An hour. An hour. And how long do you anticipate waiting? Another three and a half hours. Another three hours. That's what they're telling us. That's why people have chairs here. And, and uh, how does it make you feel? Good times. I, 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 you're, about to, you're about to get on the line. Yes. So you're about to wait four hours to vote. Yes. How do you feel about that? Uh, I, it's my duty. It's your duty. Yeah. Did you bring food? No, water? I already ate. Okay. Yeah, there you go. the end of the line. Yeah. I served this country for eight years. Really? I'm about to pick my own person. Well, it closes at eight o'clock and it's six o'clock. You're in line. Oh, if you're in line, they'll let you. Okay. How are you feeling about this? You feeling good? Pretty good. It's neck and neck. Have you heard anything about the machines inside? They're saying there's coming in from okay. here. Yeah, it's a different machine than what we're used to, they said. But it's a different machine, they said. Touch a telephone machine. Or you used to just press and you used to have some X and so forth. Now it's like a computer screen, from what I hear. What do you think about that? I think it's better. Think why, why is it better? Because then it's more secure, I believe. Mm -hmm. That way, um, they, they can't complain. Can't complain. It's what I found is they try fraud because they're found out. Mm -hmm. I mean, they find fraud because it works. Find fraud because it works. And where did you I mean, serve? I did, and, uh, I did, I did served for eight years. And where? Yeah, the army. The army. Let's not let's not disrupt the voters, guys. The army. So. Thank you for talking to us. Oh, you're welcome. Four hours. Four hours. Four hours. It's ridiculous. Was it worth it? Oh, are you typing me or filming? We are. We are. We're we're in the news. So we're. 
oh, little live stream thing here. It's yeah. a disgrace. It's I a disgrace. It's an absolute disgrace. I don't know how people that are older like myself wait in line this long. It's a disgrace. Did you um, Did you have a new machine four or something? Four and a half hours. Um, and, yeah, four and a half. And one machine is in there broken. The machine they're broken. One's broken. Um, Way to get sitting in there. <laughs> and it's yeah, it's a disgrace. Wow, it's a disgrace. We've heard a lot. Well, thanks for talking to us. Sorry, I Thank you. You were in the news then. <laughs> what, what paper? O'Keefe. O'Keefe. James O'Keefe. Yeah. Is that a... It's a, we're investigative reporters. We've been in Philadelphia most of the time, oh. exposing the, the uh, non-citizens voting. So, yeah. so yeah. And it's just really upsetting. I've heard that this is a very, like, Republican area. Is that... Uh, no, to the you, contrary. No, to the contrary. Okay. I Someone, think... Someone told me this is a very red area. Oh, no, really? I'm not familiar with that. And is this your, were you here for four hours in a row? Yeah. So you got here at like... Uh, I can tell you they're coming out now. But I'll, I mean, we'll talk to them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks for talking to us. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Flag. Four hours and 20 minutes. Four hours and yep. 20 minutes. From the stop side. I got here at 1.30. 1.30. Four yep. twenty. Yep. Also, it smells like pot over there. It really smells really bad, like disgusting marijuana, like the really foul stenching with the mix of manure. And it's 4.20, four hours and 20 minutes you have to wait. See, if you look at this door right here, this is the exit area where we're allowed to get real close. But we can't get close to the enter area. We're just going to talk to these people today. Four hours to vote and not wait like post-traumatic stress disorder. Very frustrated New Jersey people. All right, here we go. How long did you have to wait? How long did you have to wait to vote? So uh, it's just over four hours. I got here at 1.45. How you feeling? I'm tired. I'm going to go home and eat. Okay. All right. Good. It's the same kind of comment. I don't know if this is typical or unusual or um, an anomaly. Or, Lord knows. Um but we're going to just stay for a few more of these guys and talk to them. Quite fascinating. And we're going to try to get some information about what's happening with the machines here in Mount Laurel, New Jersey.